Hello YouTube, welcome back to the Web Gear Review. I'm your host, the Web Gear Guy. And today I would like to take a look at another piece of uh, an item of clothing from the days gone by. Now, if you like web gear uh, and military clothing, you're in the right place because I've got it. So I would like to uh, thank everybody who's took the time to subscribe to this channel. Share these videos with uh, your buddies or whoever and uh, hit that like button if you like what you see. And so basically, let's get into what you're looking at. Now, I know this is kind of a, a bad way uh, to display this. I don't know. I'm trying to, uh, hopefully you can see this uh, pretty good. But in 1949, uh, the work uh, field uniform consisted of a variety of HPT jackets, trousers, and combinations, and uh, one-piece HPT suits for mechanics. But as you all know, in 1952, they switched over to the OG 107 utility uniform, okay? So what you're looking at here is an OG uh, 107 cotton utility uniform. And this is a pair of coverall men's cotton would be the nomenclature on these. Uh, the nomenclature, once again, is coveralls, men's cotton, satin, type 1, okay? Now, you're looking at a pair of extra large right here on these things. Now, these babies were issued to mechanics and uh, uh, others that would work in uh, the, uh, the rear, they would wear these. And... Uh, to keep uh, everything, they're a one-piece coverall, but they're actually kind of unique. It's very, uh, let me see if I can show you some of the uh, uh, the features that this thing has. Uh, one thing that I want to show you is that the sleeves are adjustable. They have this uh, button cuff, so they can either button it to that size, or they can button it to that size. See, so both sleeves had a button cuff. Now, this here is a huge pair. These would probably fit, fit the web gear guy here. Uh, in fact, uh, I, may, I may have to use these babies to work on the car. You never know. But anyway, let's go on. Now, look here. One thing I want to draw to your attention is there's one, two, three, four, five buttons uh, up the center to button these things on. But if you look, there's another button back here underneath of the flap, okay? So in reality, there's one, two, three, four, five, and then uh, six, seven buttons going up this thing. But I understand that these were built for uh, the rear uh, troops, the mechanics and such working on a, uh, uh, the equipment, but notice this thing has a gas flap. I want to show you the gas flap in this thing. Now, this thing was made where it could really button up. Look at there for cold weather. It was made to really gas uh, button up around the uh, the neck here. Okay, and that is a big gas flap. Look at that. Let me see if I can unbutton this a little bit and show you the gas flap on these here okay so in the cold world cold war they were definitely worried about getting gassed now i know it's still a possibility today and someday it will happen and it has happened in times past but these also had the gas flap built in in them okay i thought that was interesting uh, now another feature about these uh are they got this big pocket here, and notice it does have a pen pocket or a pencil pocket right there. See that? You can slide a pen or a pencil in. Uh, like I said, has the button cuffs. Now look here. These have the adjusting waist tab. 
just like the first pattern OG 107 uh, trousers, it has the adjusting tab. Uh, go back and watch my videos on the OG 107 uh, uh, trousers and shirts, and you'll see. But look here. That thing has three adjustments in it. That's a lot that you can take up. See, so they made these to fit loosely over other clothing or such, but I'm sure men just wear them just like, uh, you know, how men do. Uh, just wear them. And so that is a lot of adjustment. Now, this side adjustment at the waist is on both sides of these babies. See here? It's also over here. I've got it buttoned all the way up. But this adjustment can be let out quite a ways. You see there? So that's quite an adjustment on these things right here, okay? Uh, another thing I want to show you, hopefully you can see, is look at the size of them pockets. It's got a big pocket right there and a big pocket right there. Now, another interesting thing down here at the... the uh, the leg, it also has the button to cinch this up around your leg. See there? So that can be cinched up tight uh, around your leg. Keep the coat out or uh, to look nice and uh, good. Now let's see if I can show you the tag on these. These particular ones uh, is dated 1973, okay? And it looks like it's uh, made by Vanderbilt Shirt Company uh, Incorporated. But let's see if I can get that up there where you can see it good. Hopefully you can read that. Okay. Now let's try to flip this thing over here. Okay, on the back side. On the back uh, right hip, you have this big old pocket. And then you have a side pocket like is on coveralls or overhauls right there, okay? You flip this thing over to the left pop hip, there is no pocket. So that's interesting that it only has a pocket on one side. If you notice the back here, it does have these pleats in it right here. It has two pleats at this adjustment, and it has two pleats at this adjustment right here, okay? So basically, if you look at these things, really, it's a pair of pants, basically, almost, sewed on to a shirt to make the coveralls, basically. I mean, if you look at it like that, it's uh, almost like that. If you look at the back seam on the, it goes right down the middle of the back of the arm, okay? And the shirt yoke looks like all to be just a one piece. The back's one piece and the front is one piece. So anyway, I know that there's a lot of people probably not interested in what a mechanic wore. But I do want to remind you that without the mechanics, tanks, helicopters, uh, jeeps, trucks, the equipment don't run. So a mechanic is just as important to a war machine. I heard once said, I think for every one guy on the combat line, they need seven to 10 in the back just to keep him supplied and keep running. In fact, during World War II, uh, I read somewhere one time, if I remember correctly, that they ran out, they they wore out 10,000 rubber tires a day alone as the breakout of Normandy began and took place. Could you imagine wearing out 10,000 rubber tires a day? Uh, you have to have some people in supply. You have to have some people in mechanics wearing this kind of uniform turning them nuts and bolts. Uh, I used to be a mechanic, so I know all about mechanicing. And uh, a pair of these would have been handy. So thanks for watching the Web Gear Review.